In this example, we're going to look at families of sets and indexed families of sets. So we're going to start off with f being a family of sets. And we are going to create another set from that. We're going to let i be the union of f. So f is the union of all the elements of the family of sets f. And then we're going to construct an indexed family of sets. We're going to say the sets a, i are an indexed family of sets where i is an element, little i is an element of capital I. So these are the three quantities we're going to work with here. We're going to look at some different functions of these, these sets. As a very specific example, and all this here is going to be for a very specific example, we're going to try to understand what these different quantities look like with this specific example. Let's let the family of sets F be this. So there's three elements here. F has three elements. And let's call those elements X1, X2, and X3. So X1 itself is a set x2 itself is a set, and x3 itself is a set, and that's why we call f a family of sets. i is the union of f, so we can actually go ahead and compute what that is. That is the union of all the elements of f. There's only three elements here, so that's x1 unioned with x2, union with x3. So for our specific example, i is the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in this case, that's what i is. I, you'll note, has six elements. There's element one, element two, element three, element four, element five, and element six. So now what about the indexed family of sets? The indexed family of sets is defined as AI such that I, little i, is in capital I. So since there are six elements in capital I, our indexed family of sets is that there's going to be a set for each element of I. So there's going to be the set A1, A2, A3, all the way through A6. So these are the quantities we're working with. What about this set? So let's take our indexed family of sets and let's take the union over every element of the set capital I and create this. So, so what does this look like? Well, this is the union of, over all little i in capital I. So we know what capital I is in this very specific case. Capital I is, is the set whose elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is a union over these six things. So if we write this out, this is simply the union of A1 with A2 with A3 all the way through A6. So this is what that set looks like for this very specific example. What about this set? So this is the union over all elements in F over the union of all elements I in X. So this is a little bit more complicated. What does this set look like? Well, part of this we can write out. We know that the family of sets F has three elements, and we call those X1, X2, and X3. So really this is kind of like a, a double loop here. We have two unions. We have a union of a union. For, so for each of these outer elements, we have to do a union on the inner elements. We basically have a union of sets for each of those. So we're going to let x be x1, and then we're going to have a union, we're going to let x equal x2, and then we're going to have another union, and then we're going to let x equal x3, and we're going to have another union, and in between each of those components there's another union, so it's a double union. So here is the first term for i in x1, because we're not letting x be equal to x1, we have a union. We're going to union that with the second term, this is a union for i in x2, and then finally the third term is a union over all the elements i in x3. So because our family of sets had three elements, this set that we're constructing here, this union of a union set, is really a union of three different things. Those three different things themselves are unions, so it's kind of complicated. But now we can go ahead and write out what, the, what these other, other unions are equal to. This first term, if we recall, what x1 and x2 and x3 were equal to, these are what x1, x2, and x3 were equal to, this first term, the union of i and x1 of ai, that is going to be itself a union of two things, a1 and a2, because i can take on the element values that are in x1, which are 1 and 2. Similarly, this second union that we're going to perform, the union of i and x2, x2 has elements 2 and 3, so we're going to take the union of sets a2 and a3. And then finally, this last union, the union of i and x3. x3 takes, has the elements of 4, 5, and 6. So this final union is going to be a union over a4, a5, and a6. So this is just a very specific example to just get a little better feel for what families of sets look like. 
what indexed families of sets look like, and what some of these more complicated sets, the union of little i and capital I of AI, and then also this set that I'm calling the union of a union set, what it looks like for a very specific example.